Okay, welcome back. We are now in section 3.4. Um, the one thing I would caution you with this section, this is the one part of this chapter where you really need to be very careful with your work. We're gonna be copying a lot of numbers multiple times and multiplying and adding several times. So watch your work carefully. So 3.4 is the fundamental theorem of algebra, which what that means uh, regarding polynomials is that we can take any polynomial and the polynomial can be written as the product of its leading coefficient, so the very first coefficient in front of the highest exponent, and its linear factors. So remember, linear means that there's no exponent. So when we write the factor as x minus a, or we're gonna, we're gonna say x minus c in this case, um, the x has an exponent of one, so it's a linear factor. So you can see over here um, with this one, here is the leading coefficient, a, and then each factor, x minus c sub one, c sub two, c sub three, and so on, until we have all of the factors listed out. Now, with these factors in chapter or section four, we could get um, real factors as well as complex factors, meaning there could be an i um, in the factor. Okay, and we'll see how that works. So we're gonna use the same methods we used in section three to find the possible zeros using p over q to test those zeros using synthetic division and then factor or use a quadratic formula for the final two when we get down to three terms. So basically the whole part of this section is taking a polynomial and writing it out as its factors. We're no longer graphing, we're no longer looking for the intercepts, we're just writing it out in its factors. So let's take a look at how this is gonna work. Here's our first polynomial. So first off, let me point out again, there are going to be four factors. Because the highest exponent is a four. <laughs> so we want to write this as the product of the leading coefficient and its linear factors. So notice the leading coefficient is a two. But I can't factor out that two because if I divide some of these by two, some will divide evenly, but this x to the third will give me a fraction. So I can't divide by two yet, but we can do that later on in the process. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna list the possible zeros, that's P over Q. So again, P would be the four, Q would be the two. So we got the factors of four divided by the factors of two. So that's gonna be um, the factors of four are one, two, and four. The factors of two, two are one and two. So we're gonna get one, two, four, and one half. And remember, that is positive and negative. So one divided by two is one half. Two divided by two is one. We already have that in the list. Four divided by two is two. We already have that in the list. So we don't need to list those twice. All right, so now we're going to be doing, whoops, started something by mistake. Let me close that. We're going to be doing synthetic division. So. We're gonna write out our factors, two, negative one, negative four, 10, and negative four. And we're going to start with one of our numbers. So remember, your shortcut is if these all add up to zero, then you could use one, but they don't add up to zero, unfortunately. So we don't even need to check for one. So let's try, um, let's try two. If we do two, so bring down our two. Two times two is four, that adds up to three. Two times three is six, that adds up to two. Two times two is four, that adds up to 14. And two times 14 is 28. Uh, we don't get zero. So two doesn't work. So if you remember I told you before, sometimes this might be kind of a guess and check. So let's try negative two. Okay, 
So um, we know that one doesn't work. Well, let's let's do like a like a used letter board from Wheel of Fortune. One didn't work, and two didn't work. So we know we don't need those. So if we bring down the two. Negative two times ne times two is negative four. That's going to add up to negative five. Negative two times negative five is positive ten. We get six. Negative two times six is negative twelve. We get negative two. And negative two times negative two is four. So we get zero. So there's our first one. Negative two is good. So now we, we, we have four terms left. We need to find another one. I believe if I remember correctly from doing this as many times as I've done it, that one half works. So once you've done your first one, this is the first time we've done a problem like this. Once you've done your first one and you get your numbers down here, let me highlight those. Then you're gonna use these numbers to do your next round of synthetic division. You don't need to go back and start over with the original ones because again, we wanna use the reduced polynomial and keep reducing it. We started with five digits, now we're down to four. We wanna get down to three. So, all right, so we're gonna bring down the two. One half of two, where two times one half is one. That adds up to negative four. Half of negative four is negative two. That adds up to four. And half of four is two, and we get zero. So one half is our second zero, okay? So remember, let's go back here, because that now is the time when this will work. We need to factor out our leading coefficient, the two, at some point. Well, look at our coefficients now. They're all numbers we can divide by two. So we've got two x squared minus four x plus four, I can write that as two times x squared minus two x plus two. Okay, and then we need to factor this. Well, unfortunately this doesn't factor, so we're gonna have to use, Pythag or, uh, not Pythagorean theorem, I was thinking of my trig class. We're gonna have to use quadratic formula for this. So let's see what we got so far. We've got this, um, negative two, we got this negative one half, and we got this two, and we need to get the, the factors or the zeros from what's left here. So we're gonna plug that into the quadratic formula. So from our polynomial here, let's come up to here. I should do that this way. Let's draw it in blue. There, so A would be one, B would be negative two, and C would be two. That's what we're gonna put into the quadratic formula. So we get the opposite of B, plus or minus B squared, minus four times A times C, all divided by two A. So two plus or minus, so negative two squared is four minus four times one times two is eight all over two. So four minus eight is negative four. So we have two plus or minus the square root of negative four over two. So this is where we're getting complex roots because when I take the square root of negative four, I get two i over two, and if I divide everything by two, I get one plus or minus i. So my last two zeros are uh, one plus i and one minus i, okay? So we need to take all our zeros that we have, the two, the one half, the one plus i, and the one minus i, and we need to write that all as factors with our leading coefficient. So you can see from this, hopefully you followed along, um, but it's, it's a lot of work. You need to work very neatly and organized. Um, and be, this is why I said, be careful when you do this, work carefully, but um, it's nothing overly complicated. 
but you just need to remember that at some point you've got to factor out that leading coefficient, which in this case was the two. So our final answer is going to be the leading coefficient, put this in black, two times the factors. So our factors we had, let me go back up here, negative two and one half. So we're going to have x minus negative two, which becomes plus two, x minus one half, x minus one plus i, and x minus one minus i. <clears throat> so you can see we have some real zeros and we have some complex zeros. And that's gonna happen with most of these problems in this section. So that is our final answer. The leading coefficient of two times each linear factor. And if we multiplied all this back together, this would equal our original polynomial. Okay, let's take a look at, um, oh, well, I guess I didn't have a second example. So let me go back here real quick and point out something. If you notice with my complex zeros, wait there for my thing, we had a one plus i and we had a one minus i. And anytime you have a complex zero, there's always gonna be a pair of them or two of the same thing, one with a plus, one with a minus. So they always come in pairs. So that is called the conjugate pair theorem. So com conjugate means that we have a complex value and it comes in a pair. So basically what you need to remember is if we have something in the form of a plus b times i, we're gonna have also a minus b times i. So, um, and we can use synthetic division to find the remaining zeros after we take out the first two complex pairs, okay? So um, remember they will always come in pairs. Remember that one is gonna be plus, one is gonna be minus. All the other terms in the, in the complex zero is going to be the same. So let me just point out, give you a couple examples. So if we had um, five plus i, then we're also gonna have five minus i. If we have two plus three i, then we're also gonna have two minus three i. So you have to remember, they're gonna give you one of them, you have to remember that the other one will always be in the problem as well. So let's take a look at this example. Here's our polynomial, and they tell us that one of the zeros is two plus i. Well, if two plus i is a zero, then two minus i is also a zero. And we're gonna do synthetic division with both of these. And then after we reduce down our polynomial, we're gonna find the remaining zeros. So here's where you need to work very carefully. So follow along here, because um, we're gonna be multiplying by uh, two plus i or two minus i. So let me show you how this works. So we got a one, a negative four, a 14, we need a plus there, I guess, a negative 36 and a negative 45. Now, let me remind you, we already know that both of these are zeros. So when I do synthetic division with both of these, my remainder is going to be zero. So keep that in mind. All right, so we're, we're gonna start with two plus i. So same process, bring down the one. Two plus i times one is two plus i. So here's where it gets a little tricky. When you add these together, whole numbers go with whole numbers, imaginary numbers go with imaginary numbers, or i's go with i's. Well, there's no i up here, so negative four plus two is negative two, and then we just have a plus i. So now we have to multiply. Two plus i times negative two plus i. Okay, let's go over here to the right. Two plus i times negative two plus i. Hopefully you're looking at this thinking, oh yeah, we need to FOIL this, because that's what we have to do. So 
Negative two times negative two is negative, I'm sorry, positive two times negative two is negative four. Two times i is plus two i. i times minus two is minus two i. And i times i is i squared. So if you notice the middle two are gonna cancel out. Two i minus two i is zero. We got negative four plus i squared. Remember, i squared is negative one. So this all gives us negative five. So 14 minus five is nine. We're gonna multiply this again. Nine times two plus i is 18 plus uh, nine i. Whoops. When we add these together, we get negative 18 plus nine i. Now here's the, here's the easy shortcut, if there is one. When I multiply these two together, I know that I have to get a zero here. So what do you think, if I multiply these together, what do you think I should get? Well, obviously we have to get 45, which is what it equals. Now to multiply those two together, you would want to FOIL them, but when you do, you're gonna get 45, okay? If you do it correctly. So now this was our remainder. So we're gonna take these four terms and now we're gonna do it again, but this time we're gonna use two minus i. And the nice thing is when you do the second one, all the i's will cancel out. So bring down the one, two minus i times one is two minus i. And look here, negative two plus two is zero, i minus i is zero, so the i goes away. Two minus i times zero is zero, bring down the nine because add those up, we get nine. Two minus i times nine is 18 minus nine i, and that adds up to zero. So we are left with just these three terms, which is x squared plus zero x, we don't need to write that, plus nine. So we can factor this or we can solve it. Well, basically we can't factor it, so we're gonna have to solve it, make it equal to zero, and solve. So subtract nine from both sides. So we got x squared equals negative nine. If we do the square root, x will equal three i and negative three i. So our four zeros are two plus i, two minus i, three i, and negative three i. So, pay attention to the problem. Let's go back to the problem. They want us to find all the zeros. Well, we found all the zeros. So, this isn't like before where we had to write it out as a product of all the factors, that we just need the four zeros. There they are, okay? Now, if the problem says find the remaining zeros, so instead of all, it might say remaining, Then, in this case, if it was just remaining, this one right here that was given, we don't include in our answer. So remaining is everything that isn't given. So two minus i and the three i and the minus three i, okay? All right. We're gonna skip this one because it's very complicated and I didn't put one this, hard in your um, homework, so skip that one. Again, the previous one, if you follow along with this one and use this as an example, this is what the ones in your homework will be like and the one on the test will be like as well. So the last thing is find the polynomial function with given zeros. So this is the exact opposite of what we did before they gave you the polynomial and asked you to find the zeros. Now they're gonna give you the zeros <laughs> excuse me, and ask you to find the polynomial. So we're gonna take the zeros, and first off, we're going to um, write all the zeros as factors in the form of x minus a. We're gonna multiply them together in pairs of two, so take the first two, FOIL them, take that answer and multiply by the next one, and keep going until we have used up all the factors, and that will give us our polynomial, okay? So the first one here, 
kind of nice and simple because we have all real zeros, one, two, and negative three. So that means we got x minus one, x minus two, and x plus three. So we're going to take the first two and foil them. So if I multiply x minus one times x minus two, I get x squared minus three x plus two. And then I'm gonna take that times x plus three. So again, we're gonna distribute is basically what we're doing. But if we take the whole entire first polynomial times x, and then the whole entire thing times three, that's the best way to simplify that. So x squared times x is x to the third. 3x times x is 3x squared. 2 times x is 2x. Okay. x squared times 3 is 3x squared. Minus 3x times 3 is minus 9x. And 3 times 2 is 6. So we're going to combine like terms. We're going to put the x squareds together. We're going to put the x's together. So we've got x to the third. Minus 3x squared plus 3x squared. That's actually zero. Those cancel out. 2x minus 9x is minus 7x. And then we have a plus 6. So this is our polynomial from those three zeros. Okay. Our last problem is the same thing, but now we have a complex root. So we have 4 as 1, 0. We have 1 plus 2i, which means we also have 1 minus 2i. So we need to multiply all three of those together. So again, first, write them as factors. So that's going to be x minus 4, x minus 1 plus 2i, and x minus 1 minus 2i. Now, when you've got complex zeros, you want to multiply complex first. Because when you do that, it's going to get rid of the i. So be sure to do that. So we want to do these two first and take that answer times x minus four. So take the first x times everything, take the, the second one, in this case minus one times everything, and take the two i times everything. So work this out carefully and all your i's, if you do it right, should cancel out. So x times all of this gives us x squared minus, I'm gonna write it as one x, minus 2ix, okay? Negative one times all of this gives us minus x plus one plus 2ix. Oh no, just 2i, sorry. And then 2i times all of this, let's put that in blue, gives us, um, plus 2ix, there's our 2ix that we needed, um, minus 2i minus 4i squared. So first off, we got a minus 2ix and a plus 2ix. Those cancel out. We have a plus 2i and a minus 2i. That cancels out. And we have an i squared, which is negative 1. So this becomes negative or positive 4. So we're left with x squared minus x minus x is minus 2x plus 1 plus 4 is plus 5. And we're going to multiply all of that times x minus 4. Okay. So x minus 4 times x squared is x to the third minus 4x squared. X minus four times minus two X is minus two X squared plus eight X. And X minus four times five is plus five X minus 20. 
So combine your like terms. We've got those two. We've got these two. So our final polynomial is x to the third minus 6x squared plus 13x minus 20. So again, work carefully with these. Make sure you don't miss anything. Watch your signs carefully. And your final answer is just going to be a single polynomial. All right, so that is section four. Again, I cannot stress enough, work, work, work carefully. And make sure you watch your eyes when you're doing this. So with all of this in section four, you are more than likely going to have some complex zeros. So make sure you understand how to use those, especially when you're doing them in synthetic division. And you should have no trouble with the problems or getting a good grade with these questions on the test. Have a great day. 3.5 is the last section. It'll be ready for it. Uh, you'll be able to see that online. It is a very short section, so you'll be happy that uh, I think the video is about 10 minutes. So don't forget office hours or message me on WebAssign if you have any questions.